The history of Def Leppard begins in 1976. Savage was born in Sheffield, South Yorkshire. Savage was educated at Tapton Secondary School in Sheffield, where he met Tony Kenning and Pete Doubleday. Savage in his youth, he learned to play the guitar together with his older brother. They played songs such as Maggie May by Rod Stewart and American Pie by Don McLean. Savage also continued his career as a professional footballer with Sheffield United, despite his dedication to rivals Sheffield Wednesday. Savage eventually chose music and in 1976 formed a group with Tony Kenning and Pete Doubleday's called Atomic Mass. Early in their career, the band played covers of famous glam rock bands such as Queen, Slade, Deep Purple, Jimi Hendrix and other popular rock artists of the time. Nicholas Mackley, then Paul Holland sang on vocals at the beginning. Rick Savage, Tony Kenning and Pete Doubleday, all students at Tapton School in Sheffield, South Yorkshire, formed a band called Atomic Mass in 1976. Pete Willis joined in 1977, left briefly but returned full-time. The band originally consisted of Doubleday, and later Willis, on guitar, Savage on bass guitar after playing guitar briefly. Kenning on drums, Andy Nicholas on bass, and Nick Mackley on vocals. Other members who have come and gone include Paul Holland, vocals, Melanie Davis, guitars, keyboards, violin, bass. Paul Hampshire, lead guitar, and Nick Haunt, vocals. Only 18 years old, Joe Elliott tried to join the band as a guitarist after a chance meeting with Willis after missing a bus from work in November 1977. Joe Elliott was born in Sheffield to Joseph William Elliott, 1930-2011, and Cynthia Gibson. He was educated at King Edward VII School. Elliott met Pete Willis, of local band Atomic Mass, in November 1977 after missing a bus. Upon learning that both were musicians, Willis invited Elliott to meet the rest of the Atomic Mass members. The band spent hours talking and listening to records in Elliott's bedroom. Elliott tried his hand as a guitarist, and while the band had not heard Elliott sing, they were impressed with his attitude and I'd in Elliot's bedroom. Elliot tried his hand as a guitarist, and while the band had not heard Elliot sing, they were impressed with his attitude and ideas about being in a band, and he became the band's lead singer instead. The other members also took Elliot's suggestion to change the name to Def Leppard. Elliot came up with the name of the band in his youth. Tony Kenning suggested that they rename the band, Def Leppard, to distinguish them from contemporary punk bands such as the Flying Lizards and Boomtown Rats. The band claims that any apparent resemblance between Led Zeppelin's name and Def Leppard was unintentional. Elliot soon became an integral part of the band while contributing his songwriting skills. The band's first rehearsals were at the Portland Works with their first gig on July 18, 1978, at the Westfield School in Sheffield, England. In January 1978, Steve Clark joined the band. According to Elliot, he successfully auditioned for the band by playing Lynyrd Skynyrd's Free Bird in its entirety. In November, just before the recording sessions for the three-song release known as the Def Leppard EP, Kenning abruptly left the band, later formed the band Cairo. For the duration of these sessions, he was replaced by Frank Noon. At the end of the month, Rick Allen, then only 15 years old, joined the band as a full-time drummer. The sales of the EP skyrocketed after the song, Get Your Rocks Off, was aired by the famous BBC Radio 1 DJ, John Peel, 
considered at the time to be the master of punk rock and new wave music. In the annals of rock history, certain albums stand as pivotal moments that mark the emergence of iconic bands. One such landmark release is the Death Leopard EP, a record that offers a glimpse into the formative years of the legendary British rock band Death Leopard. Released in 1979, this extended play, EP, served as a precursor to the band's meteoric rise to fame, showcasing their raw talent, energy, and the seeds of their distinctive sound. Death Leopard's journey began in Sheffield, England, in the late 1970s. Formed by a group of teenagers with a shared passion for music, the band's lineup included Joe Elliott on vocals, Pete Willis and Steve Clark on guitars, Rick Savage on bass, and Tony Kenning on drums, later replaced by Rick Did Joe Elliott on vocals. Pete Willis and Steve Clark on guitars, Rick Savage on bass, and Tony Kenning on drums, later replaced by Rick Allen. Eager to break into the music scene, the young musicians played local gigs and diligently honed their craft. By 1978, Death Leopard had gained some local recognition and was actively seeking a recording deal. They began working with local producer Nick Torber, whose guidance helped them refine their sound. The band's blend of hard rock and melodic hooks was beginning to take shape. It was during this period that they recorded their first independent single, Get Your Rocks Off, which garnered attention and piqued the interest of major record labels. In January 1979, Def Leppard entered Fairview Studios in Hull to record what would become the Def Leppard EP, consisting of three tracks, Ride Into the Sun, Get Your Rocks Off, and The Overture, the EP captured the youthful exuberance and raw energy that defined the band's early performances. The EP's production was relatively modest, reflecting the limited resources available to an emerging band. However, this inherent simplicity worked in their favor, as it preserved the authentic essence of their live sound. The Def Leppard EP was released independently through the band's own label, Bludgeon Rifola Records, in January 1979, and it quickly gained attention within the rock underground. As the Def Leppard EP made its way into the hands of fans and music industry insiders, its impact was undeniable. The EP's tracks showcased Def Leppard's ability to seamlessly weave together hard-hitting guitar riffs with catchy melodies, a combination that would later become a hallmark of their signature style. Ride Into the Sun introduced listeners to Joe Elliott's powerful vocals, which would become a defining element of the band's sound. Get Your Rocks Off proved to be a standout track, capturing the band's electrifying live energy and capturing the essence of their live performances. The song's infectious chorus and memorable guitar hooks left an indelible mark and it became a fan favorite that would remain a staple in their live shows for years to come. The Overture, an instrumental piece, showcased the band's musical versatility and hinted at their potential to experiment with different sonic textures. This track served as a testament to their creative ambition. Even in the early stages of their career, the success of the Def Leppard EP caught the attention of major record labels, and the band soon signed a deal with Mercury Records. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of Def Leppard's journey from local heroes to international rock icons. Their subsequent albums, such as High and Dry, 1981, Pyromania, 1983, and the groundbreaking Hysteria, 1987, propelled them to superstardom and solidified their place in rock history. Looking back, the Def Leppard EP stands as a crucial milestone in Def Leppard's trajectory.
It serves as a testament to the band's determination, talent, and unrelenting passion for music. The EP's release marked the start of a remarkable journey that would see Def Leppard become one of the best-selling music artists of all time. With their music continuing to inspire and resonate with generations of rock enthusiasts. In conclusion, the Def Leppard EP remains a cherished relic in the annals of rock history. A snapshot of a band on the cusp of greatness, and a reminder of the raw, unbridled energy that fuels the spirit of rock and roll. Throughout 1979, the band gained a loyal following among British hard rock and heavy metal fans and was regarded as one of the leaders of the new wave of the British heavy metal movement. The growing popularity led to signing a record deal with the major label Phonogram, Vertigo, Mercury Records in the USA. The original management of Def Leppard, MSB, a local duo consisting of Pete Martin and Frank Stewart Brown, was fired after Martin and Joe Elliott got into a fistfight over a roadside incident. The band approached Peter Mensch from Lieber Krebs Management, who booked him a UK tour in support of ACDC. Mensch, who admitted he had his eye on the band, became their manager. It after Martin and Joe Elliott got into a fistfight over a roadside incident. The band approached Peter Mensch from Lieber Krebs Management, who booked him a UK tour in support of ACDC. Mensch, who admitted he had his eye on the band, became their manager. Mm hmm.